Hello and welcome to another episode of Stroke Rounds. In this episode, we will discuss on artery of Percheron. Artery of Percheron was first described by Dr. Gerard Percheron in 1973. This story, many of you might be very familiar with, a 58-year-old presenting with sudden onset on altered sensorium. You find he has vertical gaze palsy. You do have metabolic panels normal. You do an MRI showed bilateral thalamic and midbrain infarct. So, we will discuss briefly on the thalamic blood supply, artery of Percheron, and four distinct patterns of artery of Percheron infarct. As you know, the thalamus can be divided into four parts, anterior, lateral, posterior, and the median. The anterior part is supplied by the polar artery, which is a branch of the posterior communicating artery. The lateral part is supplied by the thalamogenic late artery, which is a branch of P2. The posterior part is supplied by the posterior choroidal artery, which is again a branch of the P2 segment of the posterior cerebral artery and the medial part is supplied with the paramedian artery which is a branch of the P1 segment. There are many variations in the thalamic blood supply and one of the most common one is artery of Percheron. Another one is absent polar artery which is around present in around 30 to 60 percent of the population. In those cases where the polar artery is absent the paramedian arteries will supply both the paramedian region and the anterior thalamic region which was supposed to be supplied by the polar artery. So the variation in paramedian artery is called the artery of Percheron. You can see here in the picture this is a normal basal artery is coming it's dividing into PCA and there are many perforators from the PCA which supply the thalamus and the midbrain. In artery of Percheron from a single branch, it is supplying bilateral midbrain as well as bilateral thalami. So there are basically variations of paramedic artery. Type 1 is a normal one. Type 2, from a single side, it is supplying both halves. Type 3 is known as a Percheron. From a single trunk, it is dividing and supplying both midbrain, half of the midbrain and the thalami. And type from from an arterial arcade, a supply is coming which is supplying the midbrain as well as the thalamic. So artery of Percheron as I have said described by the French neurologist Gerard Percheron in 1973. It is a single vessel that supply the bilateral structures thalamic as well as midbrain. It is present in up to 33 percentage of the population but of all ischemic stroke, around 0.1 to 2 percentage are due to artery of Persian or infarcts. So the bilateral medial thalamic infarcts are the common one and there will be a variable involvement of the rostral midbrain. So what are the four patterns of artery of Persian or infarct? The most common one, that is 43 percentage, is the bilateral paramedian thalami with rostral midbrain. It can be without a midbrain infarct that is bilateral paramedian thalami alone that is in 38 percentage. If the polar artery is absent the paramedian arteries will be supplying the anterior thalamic region also. So in that scenario bilateral paramedian anterior thalami and midbrain can get affected that is in, in around 14 percentage. Bilateral paramedian anterior thalami without midbrain is in, in around 5 percentage of the patients. So this is a typical MRI picture bilateral thalami with a midbrain involvement. This is thalamic involvement without midbrain involvement. This is a peculiar sign which is seen in the involvement of the mid rostral midbrain. In axial flare sections, you can see a V-shaped hyperintensity. This is known as the V sign, which is very peculiar in artery of Percheron in Fox. So all these bilateral paramedian in Fox are typically characterized by a triad of altered mental status, vertical case palsy and memory impairment. Although there are other clinical features like aphasia, dysarthria, ocular, other ocular movement abnormalities, motor deficits, cerebral loss signs, other non-specific presentations like hypersomnia, tremors, seizures, hypothermia, etc. The commonest ones are altered mental status, gaze abnormalities, and memory impairment. 
So why are altered mental status due to? They are due to can range from drowsiness to hypersomnolence to coma. Usually occur with sudden onset and even may persist until death. There are some cases which have complete recovery. Vertical gaze palsy is due to the midbrain involvement. Even without midbrain, you can get disruption of the cortical inputs that travel through the thalamus, which can present with gaze palsies. There are reports of horizontal gaze palsy with or without pupillary involvement also. Memory environment sometimes presents with confabulation, usually resolves with time because of the involvement of the mammillar thalamic tract, anterior nuclei, and dorsal medial nuclei, which are supplied through the paramedian and the polar artery territory. So what are the key points? Artery repression is a single vessel that supply bilateral structures. There are four patterns of infarct and the V sign is a peculiar pattern. Altered mental status, vertical gaze palsy and memory amendment are the commonest clinical findings. Thank you. Please leave your comments in the comment sections below.